like start being the light in the darkness around you. Cause there is a lot of darkness of fear of doubt, of unbelief of, of none of lack of sufficiency, self-sufficiency. You start to shine your light and encourage people and help people. My wife coaches and helps people all day long. It's like what she does. It gives her so much purpose. And if this resonates with you, especially after listening an hour into the talk, whatever, now like, wow, if this resonates with you, we need you. We need more people to just live this life and to help freely, to help freely. Yeah, I'm not getting paid for this podcast. Yeah, I hope you buy a book, but I don't care if you do or don't. It's, it, it's not my motive. It, you know, it's not what keeps my, it's not what keeps me going. And, you know, I'm very fortunate to ultimately make a living doing something that I love because work now becomes passion and, and there's no work. You do what you love, you love what you do. So just kind of feel led to share that, encourage some folks that you can be that source of hope and light in your circle of influence. However small or large it might be, let's not get hung up in the numbers. Let's, let's get hung up on who we are. And that's when my life changed on a spiritual level, when I had meaning, because I truly believe the world will never be what it needs to be a place of peace, love, harmony, until everyone fulfills what I believe is their purpose. And I don't know what that is for you. I know what it is for me. And it seems very apparent. And I love it. It's who I am. It's my breath of life. And to help someone find that is a joy. It's a true joy. When you receive the source from the divine, when you realize why you're here. And ultimately, that really brings a lot, a lot full circle, even in our conversation, but people that are wondering when, when your mindset gets away from like, I just don't want to be sick. I want to live till I'm a hundred. Like, what's your, why, what's your purpose? You know, my purpose for living the way I do is to fulfill my calling. And that, by the way, is a little, we talk about this in the diabetes obesity chapter of my book. I'm like, why do you want to lose weight? Why do you want, why? And for me, number one is for God. I have, I believe, a moral obligation to take care of this temple. It's truly the only thing that I was given. Nothing else when I enter in this world other than this body, in my opinion, is all I have, earthly-wise. I need to take care of it. It's an obligation. So now, guess what? I become accountable to a divine power. I become accountable to my creator. I become accountable to my God in the way that I eat, in the way that I live. That supersedes anything that you want to get into skinny jeans to look good or to fit into a dress for your daughter's wedding. Like That's why fad diets fail. That's why people go on the diet yo-yo. If your why isn't rooted into something that I believe has to be even above you. And my second why is for my family, for my people, for the people that rely on me, you know, as a Christian, it's very heart wrenching for me to be in this circle of people to try to fellowship and oftentimes a struggle and commune with people that don't get this. I mean, the Southern Baptist association, right? Which we're from Georgia, tons of Southern Baptist people in the area. I mean, it's statistically one of the overweight sickest people in the country. I mean, their biscuits and gravy, they're eating their way. You can't pray over McDonald's and expect God to make into a health food. And this mentality where people are not focused on their health and they're like, oh, we have faith that don't matter. And I'm like to a pastor friend of mine, well, brother, you can't preach when you're dead. How many of our friends, how many of our colleagues have to die of heart attacks at 50? 60, 70, even 80 prematurely before we realize, you know, I do reap what I sow. So it's a struggle. It's a struggle of people of faith, not recognizing. So for people that have a purpose, for people that have a family, people rely on you. We got to take care of ourselves. And ultimately for you, I mean, that, that to me is the third why, like for me, I mean, I, I need to, I need to be confident in who I am. 
I, I need to love myself. And it's hard. It really is hard for people to appreciate who they are and to practice self-love when every time you look in the mirror and you're like, you're fat and ugly. Well, number one, you could do something about that. It's how you think for sure. You're viewing yourself differently. This isn't fat shaming, but let's call out the elephant in the room. We can't normalize obesity. That means we're normalizing premature death. And I think that's really dangerous in what we're doing right now in this culture where we're normalizing everything that could be potentially dangerous for people. I, I don't want to normalize obesity because if I do, it's going to justify someone from not changing and you will die sooner than later, prematurely from a complication of that. And I don't know how that serves people. Now, neither do we fat shame. How do we balance this? How do we be like, look, let's just be healthy. We could be healthy, not a matter how we look, but we need to be healthy for God, for our, our influence, our people, and for us. And that just shifts this empowerment that shifts. It puts the onus on you. And this way of life permeates everything, what you eat, what you do, what you put on your body, what you smell. It's life-changing, at least in my opinion. It's life-changing for people that, that get it and that start on this path.